Grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. We've come together in the presence of God to institute Mike as team rector of the Canford Magna team, to pray for him and for those who minister with him, and to dedicate ourselves afresh to the service of God in this place and to the call which God makes for each one of us. Bishop Karen, as patrons of this benefice, we have read the parish profile and statement of needs, and after due consultation have chosen Mike. We present him to you and ask you to admit to this cure of souls. I thank you, Phil, for your presentation and for that of the other patrons and for the prayer and discernment that lie behind it. So church wardens and people of this benefice, do you welcome Mike? Will you, care, will you share with Mike in mission and in pastoral care? We will. we will. And Mike, I ask you, in the presence of this congregation, are you willing to receive this cure? I am. So let's pray for Mike, particularly as he takes on this new task now. As we now license him to this cure of souls, let us pray for him and for all who share in the ministry of this benefice, that he may be a faithful priest and true shepherd, and that they may work together for the building up of God's kingdom in this place. God our Father, Lord of all the world, we thank you that through your Son, you have called us into the fellowship of your universal church. Hear our prayer for all your faithful people, as in their vocation and ministry each may be an instrument of your love. And give to your servant Mike and to all who minister in this place the needful gifts of grace, through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Reading from the book of Acts, chapter 6, beginning at the first verse. Now in these days, when the disciples were increasing in number, the Hellenists murmured against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily distribution. And the twelve summoned the body of the disciples and said, It is not right that we should give up preaching the word of God to serve tables. Therefore, brethren and sisters, pick out from among you seven men of good repute, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom we may appoint to this duty. But we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And what they said pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch, these they set before the apostles, and they prayed and laid their hands upon them. And the word of God increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests were obedient to the faith. Hmm. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Now before I start, I must say that as a woman in leadership, this would not be my top pick of Bible verses. <laughs> Reading that the disciples selected seven good men of standing, an inquiring woman would ask, well what about the women? So why did I select this verse for today? Well, it came to mind because of what we find ourselves doing in this rather bizarre appointment process, exchange of roles and issuing of new licences. Firstly, because there is a task to be done. In the book of Acts, the issue was the neglecting of widows when it came to the distribution of food. The disciples had their role, and it was agreed to appoint seven deacons, those that wait on table, to undertake the practical and missional task. There is also a task to be done here, 
and a local discernment has gone on as to who is the best person for it. As others in the wider team discern their own roles inside and outside the church, Mike, your leadership skills have been recognised and today affirmed as you take on the role of rector. In the final years of his own ministry here, Chris too has considered his gifts and discerned a need to step back into a different role. Secondly, I chose the passage because it reveals a mutual serving, a recognition that we cannot do it all by ourselves and need colleagues to assist in what God is calling us to do. Discernment is key as all who offer their gifts and experience to the service of our Lord. The passage demonstrates that social action in the early church was to go hand in hand with teaching and preaching and people were needed for both tasks. The task of a post-Covid church will also need those who get involved outside the church as much as inside to serve those in need and like the widows in the passage particularly those who fall through the gaps in our social systems those who also go hungry and those whose day-to-day -day needs we take for granted but aren't there thirdly the passage highlights the practice we continue today which is so necessary for any ministry done in christ's name the laying on of hands and prayer now that may not be possible today without the use of hand sanitizer however there is an admission in all of us when we consider the task that god calls us to do that we cannot do it in our own strengths but need god's help for it and the power of the spirit to be who god calls us to be and to do what god calls us to do therefore we all pray for you both today and in our minds and hearts all metaphorically lay our hands upon you both asking for god's empowerment and finally i chose the passage because of the ending through the faithfulness of everyone putting themselves in god's way and being commissioned to be used by him in service mm. we learn that the word of god continued to spread that the disciples number increased greatly in jerusalem where they were and even a great many of the priests became obedient to the faith mm. that's my prayer for you all here by the right discernment of gifts and abilities and your provision for all those in need through social action and proclamation mm. the word of god continues to be spread not just in Camphor magna and bear wood but far far beyond that people see the hungry being fed in many ways as all ministers exercise a priestly and a diaconate ministry to the glory of god mm. as we read the names of those men with stephen among them who we read only in the next chapter of the book of acts is arrested we're reminded that it is a costly ministry to which we're called so what we do today is a serious undertaking as well as something quite unusual for all of us this is a recommitment to go and to be and to serve and to follow not only knowing what the future holds but trusting in the power and faithfulness of god which has been there since time began and continued from the early church to today and into our future Amen. Amen. We're now going to hear the words of a hymn chosen by Mike. we worship why don't we stand together and although uh, we can't all sing together this morning let's just um, take this opportunity at the start of this new season actually just to find ourselves at the foot of the cross once again when I 
survey the wondrous cross on which the prince of glory died my richest gain I count but lost and poor content oh my pride
The Church of England is part of the one holy, catholic and apostolic church, worshipping the one true God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. It professes the faith uniquely revealed in the Holy Scriptures and set forth in the Catholic creeds, which faith the Church is called upon to proclaim afresh in each generation. Led by the Holy Spirit, it has borne witness to Christian truth in its historic formularies, the 39 Articles of Religion, the Book of Common Prayer and the ordering of bishops, priests and deacons. In the declaration, Mike, you are about to make, will you affirm your loyalty to this inheritance of faith as your inspiration and guidance under God in bringing the grace and truth of Christ to this generation and making him known to those in your care? I, Michael Henry Erskine Tufnell, do so affirm and accordingly declare my belief in the faith which is revealed in the Holy Scriptures and set forth in the Catholic creeds and to which the historic formularies of the Church of England bear witness. And in public prayer and in administration of the sacraments, I will use only the forms of service which are authorised or allowed by canon. I, Mike Tufnell, swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors, according to law. So help me God. I, Mike Tufnell, do swear by Almighty God that I will pay true and canonical obedience to the Lord Bishop of Salisbury and his successors in all things lawful and honest. So help me God. Having made those declarations, Mike may now receive the cure of souls here. I, Karen, by divine permission, Bishop of Sherborne, duly authorised for this purpose under the provision of the Diocese of Salisbury Episcopal Ministry Scheme, 2009, to my beloved in Christ, Michael Tufnell Clark, greeting. I do hereby institute and admit you as a teen rector to the benefice of Canford Magna within the diocese and jurisdiction of the Bishop of Salisbury, to which you have been presented by the Canford Magna Patronage Board, the patron thereof, and I invest you with all the rights and duties of the said benefice and appoint you to be leader of the teen ministry established for the same. And I commit to you the cure of souls of the parishioners to be shared with the other members of the team chapter, thereof saving to the Bishop of Salisbury and his successors their episcopal rights. In testimony whereof I have hereunto set my hand, and the episcopal seal of the Bishop of Salisbury is hereunto affixed this 24th day of March in the year of our Lord, 2021. With you, Mike has dedicated himself for fresh to God's service. We now ask God's blessing upon his continued ministry among you. I want to just reach out your hand to Mike. Almighty Father, give your servant grace to fulfil his calling in this team. Give him reverence in ministering the sacraments, faithfulness in proclaiming your word, diligence in pastoral care, tenderness in comforting, power in healing the wounds of Christ's people, and humility and self-sacrifice in all things. That following the steps of your Son, he may guide your people towards eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Mike, receive this curious souls, which is both yours and mine, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, make you perfect in every good work to do his will. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and upon all your work done in his name. Amen. Archdeacon Anthony, I ask you now to induct and install Mike.
by virtue of the authority given to me, I induct you into this church and benefice with all the rights and responsibilities belonging to it. Receive the keys of the church in token of the responsibility which we share. I place you in the stall of the minister of this benefice and may God the Holy Trinity make you strong in faith and love defend you on every side and guide you in the ways of truth and peace Amen, Amen. Amen. So people of this benefice I present to you your new team rector now duly instituted inducted and installed and I invite you to greet him in the name of Christ I commend him to your love and to your prayers we welcome you may the Lord richly bless you and make you a blessing among us